Hey everyone, Jason from Alphatone Audio back again. Got a pedal board project in front of us today. Got all the audio wired up. Don't have the power wired up yet because that's gonna be the topic of today's video. I wanna talk about how to better maximize your power supplies. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about what happens if you have more pedals on your board than you have ports on your power supply. So I'm gonna break the initial part of this down into two pieces. One, we're gonna take a look at the capabilities of the power supply. And two, we're gonna take a look at all of the individual pedals we need to power with said power supply. So about this power supply, this is the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus, very popular. They've been around a long time. They're great units. Uh, although everything I'm going to be talking about, you can apply this to no matter what manufacturer, what kind of brand of uh, power supply you have. I'm going to be speaking like pretty generically about a lot of this stuff. So I'd recommend whatever power supply you're using, learn everything you can about it. Read the manual, see if there's any good, interesting tips or tricks or something in there that you may learn. Uh, I certainly learned something about this when I was going through the manual, looking into doing research for this video. So uh, this one has has eight outputs, the first four, nine volts at 100 milliamps, although you can switch them up to 12 volts if you need to. The next two outputs, five and six, are 250 milliamps at nine volts. You can switch those into an unswitched mode for some of the older line six pedals, but we're not gonna need to do that today. And then uh, the last two outputs, seven and eight, nine volts at 100 milliamps as well. And those have that SAG control on it where you can flip the switch and you can vary the voltage from four to nine volts, which can be fun on some dirt pedals or stuff like that which we're not gonna be doing today. Uh, one of my favorite features about this though is it has the accessory outlet on the back, which is just a standard three prong AC outlet at 110 volts. And it's rated for 200 watts on that. Uh, do the math on that. And that comes out to just over 1600 milliamps, which is quite a bit. It's actually more than what you get out of all the ports combined on the front. So this is something we're definitely be taking advantage of. Now over on the pedal side, there's three things you have to figure out about any pedal that you want to power off of your power supply. You need to figure out the current draw in milliamps, the voltage, and the physical connector, the actual power connector type. So if you look at the first six pedals we have here on the board, talking about the wall, the compressor, overdrive, the distortion, the dark side, and the warp vinyl, they're all pretty standard. They all use the standard uh, connector, which is 2.1 millimeter center negative. You'll see that on most pedals today. They all run on nine volts and the current draw on all of them is less than 100 milliamps, which means I could plug any of these pedals into any one of those outlets on the power supply and that would be just fine. Now when we get to the H9, things get a little more complicated. That takes 500 milliamps at nine volts, or if you can run off 12 volts, it only takes 380 milliamps. Plus the physical connector on that is a little bit different. It uses a 2.5 millimeter as opposed to the 2.1 and the center is positive, not negative. Moving on to the B7K. That's nine volts, 2.1 millimeter in the center negative, uh, but it takes 110 milliamps. So we're a little bit limited in choices on that in that I can only use uh, five and six outputs for that one. The Deluxe Memory Man, 100 milliamps, runs at 24 volts, 2.5 millimeters center negative. Now there's no way I can get any single port up 24 volts, so that's gonna present a problem for us. And in the Ventress, pretty standard, except for current draw is 280 milliamps. So again, we're exceeding the top current draw for any single port. 10 pedals, eight ports, we've got some current restrictions on this. Let's take a look at some of the tools that the power supply manufacturers give to us that we can try to get this puzzle solved. If you already have a power supply, you know you get a whole lot of cables along with the power supply in the box. You get a whole bunch of these, which are your standard 2.1 millimeter power cables. You'll get some odd ones out like the nine volt adapter or the eighth inch jack adapter. Uh, and you may also get some manufacturer specific cables like this one, which works with the even tie cables, which is 2.1 millimeter on one side, but 2.5 millimeter on the other side, and it also swaps the polarity. And these are all well and good. If you need them, you need them. And if you don't, that's fine too. But the star of the show for today is going to be these cables, which generally don't come in the box. You have to get these after the fact. Starting with this one, and probably the most common one, this is going to be a port splitter. And what this does is this end would go into one of the ports of the power supply, and that enables you to plug two pedals into that one port. Now, you have to make sure that when we talked about earlier on, when you have to know the current draw for all the individual pedals, you want to make sure that the total current draw between both pedals don't exceed the current capacity of the port. So if the port supplies up to 100 milliamps, you could do one pedal at 50, one pedal at 50, whatever. One pedal at 70, one pedal at 30. It doesn't matter as long as the sum total of the draw for both pedals doesn't exceed 100. And then uh, you see a white stripe down one side. This is actually ground isolated on this one side. And the thought being, as long as you're gonna have two pedals plugged into one circuit, you always wanna make sure there's only one path back to ground so you don't introduce a ground loop whenever you're splitting your current source. Now, 
when talking about manufacturer specific cables on these, all these cables are essentially the same. Every power supply manufacturer is going to have their own type of cables and they're basically interchangeable from all the different supplies that you can find out there. So if you have a Strymon power supply, then you also have like a Voodoo Labs power supply. You can use the cables from one manufacturer with another manufacturer's power supply. They're all basically the same. So this is again, first one up and probably the most common is the port splitter. This one is a current doubler. So the way this one works is you actually plug each one of these into two ports on the power supply and it enables you to power one pedal, but you actually get the combined total of all the current capacity between those two ports to that one pedal. So if you plug this into a hundred milliamp port, this goes into hundred milliamp. You can actually have 200 milliamps on tap to provide to that pedal. Now there's a little bit of a controversy about these as far as how much current you actually get. If you take hundred and hundred, no one really doubts that you get 200. But if you were to mix two different values of ports, say like a 100 and a 250, like we have on the power supply here on this board, some people say you should only still use 200 milliamps on that because what the pedal is going to want to do is it's always going to want to draw the same amount of current from each port. Now, if you wanted to say 100 and 250, 250, that gives you a total of 350. You want to plug in a pedal that takes say 300, split that in half 150, 150. So it's going to want to have to draw 200 from one port and 100 from another. Some people say that leads to some voltage instability whatsoever. Uh, you can always give it a shot. I have not confirmed or denied it. Just something you may want to keep in mind if you actually run into that scenario. Now, very much just like the current doubler, we have a voltage doubler. Again, you're going to take two ports on the power supply for this to power one pedal, but it's going to take the sum of the voltage between the two ports and it's going to supply to that pedal. So if this goes into nine volts, this goes into nine volts, you're going to get 18 on this end. So again, on this one, you get double the current, but you don't get double the voltage. On this one, you get double the voltage, but you don't get double the current. It's one or the other, and you can't have both. I spoke earlier that we we're going to use the accessory port on the back of the power supply. And if you have any modern digital pedals, they tend to take quite a bit of current and you probably get a, one of these wall wart type power adapters that come along with it. Now, if you only have to use one of them, you just plug it right into the accessory outlet and life is good. But if you have to use more than one of these, you're going to need some type of power strip solution. And that's actually one of the reasons I wanted to make the video because I saw a thread on some popular forum where a bunch of people were trying to find like a good power strip solution for a pedal board. And the fact of the matter is there just aren't that many. They're usually just too big or even the small ones or have the plug orientation they're way and besides whenever you have to get more than one of these in a close distance you can never seem to get that perfect power strip where you can get these as close together as possible instead of going the standard power strip route you could always just get yourself a really simple cheap extension cord like this these are like a few dollars you can get them just about anywhere you know one is like lamp style it's not even grounded it just has like plus and minus on here and even though it has three outlets you're probably only going to be able to get two of these in there you could use one for side but that's going to be everything we need for this particular build and uh, one of the things i like about this is just because they're so small and even though it's a six foot you don't have to use all six feet of the extension cord going from the accessory outlet to wherever you're going to end up parking these on your board you can always cut this down and i found these low profile two prong power plugs so basically all you have to do is just figure out how much of the cord you need cut off the plug and then just reinstall this plug on the end of the cable and you only have as much as you need you're not like clogging up your pedal board with extra cable and, and whatsoever now one of the things to keep in mind this is a polarized extension cord which means the hot is a little bit smaller than the neutral and that just makes sure that anything that has to be plugged in a certain way always gets plugged in a certain way all of these small dc power adapters are unpolarized meaning both pins are the same width now, because I know what I'm going to be plugging into this, whenever I wire this on here, I'm not going to be too worried about the polarity as far as it's like which cable gets tied into like which pin. Because it's not ultimately it's not really going to matter, especially on these DCs. And if you ever take a multimeter and just do like a little voltage test on these, you could plug it into a strip one way and you can actually reverse it. And you're going to notice that the voltage output is not going to change from positive to negative or vice versa. They're always going to be outputting whatever voltage polarity they need to be. However, if you're actually plugging in something that does have polarized pins on it, or if you have any kind of AC adapter, you definitely want to make sure that if you're going to do this, cut this extension cord, when you put your end on there, you want to make sure that you're using a polarized plug, not an on non-polarized like this one, and make sure that you get the pin out right, just to prevent any damage to your equipment, just to make sure that everything is safe. If you did need a cord that you could actually plug three of these into, I did find one out there where you have one on one side, and then the spacing is pretty far on the other side where you could easily get two on one side and one on the other. And I'm going to have links to all this stuff in the description. 
One more note about using the accessory power on the back of your power supply. There's no reason why you can't take an entire second power supply and plug it into that port. Uh, I've had a previous rig before where I actually had another Voodoo Labs power supply. It was the digital that had the four ports with 400 milliamps per port. And I had that plugged into the back of the uh, power supply that I have on this board and everything worked just fine. Having said that, there's no reason why you couldn't just take something like a one spot and plug that into the back of the accessory port and just use it like that. And even use it with, it comes with this little stringer that fits on there and you can actually like power five pedals off this. Now, even though this isn't isolated, you may not have to isolate every one of your pedals. So this could actually be a good compromise instead of having to go out and buy a power or an isolated power supply with a lot bigger capacity. If you have some pedals that are problematic, you could plug those into the isolated ports on the power supply and then all the ones that are not problematic, you could simply just run them off a daisy chain like this. Because at the end of the day, if you look at this daisy chain, it's not really any different whatsoever from the standard port splitter that we were using anyway. So just something else to think about to give yourself a lot more port capacity and current capacity using that accessory port. So let's take a look at how I'm actually going to wire everything up. Port one, I'm going to put the wah on that. Port two, I'm going to use the port splitter and I'm going to use the compressor pedal and the overdrive pedal. So this just goes here and I'll just use two individual cables going to the two different pedals. The deluxe memory man, I'm going to use a voltage combiner. So I'm going to take these two nine volt ports, I'm going to flip the dip switches on the bottom, bring up to 12 volts. Voltage combiner goes here. And then out of here, I'm actually going to use this cable, which is 2.1 to 2.5 millimeter, and it's a polarity reversal because the, the memory man was center positive. So then that goes here, and then this end goes into the pedal. I really don't like using an adapter into adapter, but in the grand scheme of things, this was the best way to go. All I have to say is if you're gigging for a living, make sure you have spares of all these cables that you're going to need. After that, uh, dark side and five, which is the uh, higher voltage port, or sorry, higher current port. Uh, the B7K goes into the higher current port as well. Um, then the DS1 distortion on seven, uh, the warp vinyl on port eight. And then I'm going to power the H9 and the Ventress off of their respected wall warts. So let's talk about this port for just a second uh, with the compressor and the overdrive. You have to make an intelligent decision about which two pedals, or even honestly, which three pedals that you want to combine into a single port. Uh, there are some general guidelines for stuff that you want to mix and stuff you don't want to mix. In particular, you don't want to be mixing uh, two or more digital pedals together. You don't want to mix an analog and a digital pedal together. You certainly don't want to be mixing DC and AC together. Uh, I generally like to keep the more vintage type stuff like wahs and fuzzes or certainly anything germanium based. I like to keep those isolated and not mix them with each other. And then you also have to be careful with some modulation effects, basically anything that has a rate knob on it, because those can get weird when you share power together. Best way to do it is just experiment. Uh, just run the power, put two cables in, and if it introduces noise or hum or anything like that, then just try different combinations until you find something that works. Okay, at this point, everything is wired up, everything's powered up, and everything came on with no problem. It's still very much in rat's nest mode right now, but I'm fine with that. I can always clean it up later. So uh, a few things just to wrap up on this. This is what this ended up looking like. You can see I've got the, this low profile plug that I put on the end, the extension cord. Um, whenever you're going to use these power adapters, these wall warts on your pedal board, you need to make sure that they're not going to react in a bad way with something you have on your board, like make a lot of noise and a hum and that kind of stuff. So I kind of left this really long for right now. And while your board is turned on, you might want to turn it up a little bit. You can plug a guitar in to set it there and just make sure that you're hearing the output. And you can literally just kind of like run this around the pedal board and just see if it reacts with anything in a particularly nasty way. And don't forget to also do it to your power supply. Um, these older toroidal transformer supplies are a little bit more susceptible to interference that comes from these things than the new uh, switching power supplies. So, I mean, this is... Granted, this is a pretty cramped flat board. At the end of the day, if you can just set them there and it's not creating any noise for you, then just go ahead and do it. Um, if it was creating a problem and I had to store them somewhere, I would probably just get like a big old empty Hammond box, something that looks like this. And I would just actually enclose these inside the Hammond box and then actually mount the power supply on top of that or something like that. Just enclose them somehow and just create some kind of a barrier between this and the pedals and or the power supply. 
So that's one. Always just make sure these are going to, you know, create some kind of electromagnetic field or something. Just make sure it's not negatively interfering the board too much. Secondly, um, what I did say for the digital or Lux Maria Man, I did have to flip two of the switches from nine volts to 12 volts. If you do flip switches like that, you could always put in a little piece of a uh, peach touch tape on the top that says you did flip them just in case you ever redo the board at some time and you plug something else in that doesn't want 12 volts, you're not going to damage anything. So it's very understandable that you could flip those switches and they'd just be down there for years. And these are on the bottom of this power supply, so it's not like they're in plain view, so you're going to see them. So if you need to, just make a little note on top of the power supply or something that those have actually been flipped. I think that's about all I have for this one. I hope you learned something. I have a couple links that I'm going to put to a couple other videos I saw while researching for this. I thought I had good information. Basically the same kind of concept is what I'm talking about. This went about it a slightly different way just to give a little bit more information. So like I said, I hope this helps. If it did, please feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.